Hello again, it's Guy Bartlett, the founder of the Business Buyers Club. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you today about a subject that's uh, come across my desk a few times and in uh, the regular workshops that we do and uh, on one-on-one Q&As. Uh, and that's the subject of joint ventures. So uh, understandably, the subject and the content of acquiring a business, somebody else's business, an owner-managed business typically, um, can be a bit daunting for people. And even if you're an experienced business owner, used to running and operating your existing business, the, the thought of how do I work through the complexity or perceived complexity of acquiring another business can be quite daunting and in some cases put people off entirely. And the last thing I'd want is for someone to think, oh, I can't do this by myself, there's just too much to do. If it's a case that you're too busy uh, or you are perhaps not that motivated to want to learn a new skill, I get that, that's fine. And actually, we've kind of resolved that by providing a done-for-you service for people like that. Uh, so if that applies to you, just get in touch with us and we'll happily talk to you about how we can do all of that for you and kind of serve up a, ready, a ready-made deal for you. Um, But this is more about this question of do JVs work? So there's a number of uh, experts out there offering to help uh, mentor people but do it on a joint venture basis. So kind of you go away and find the deals, bring them to those, uh, those experts and then they will joint venture with you to get the deal done. Now, that sounds quite attractive, but straight away for me, I'm thinking I'm not so keen on that. And let me tell you why. So... I just jotted down on my notepad some pros and cons really. The first is on the pro side, obviously the benefit is things like shared expertise. So you don't need to necessarily know all of the techniques or indeed know where to go to raise the cash, how to structure the deal, uh, how to sort of finish off the process or or indeed what are you going to do when you've you've completed the purchase. So that seems quite appealing. It's kind of, I've got this deal opportunity, can you help me to get it over the line? So that makes sense, uh, doing a JV. The second is that constant thing of leveraging skill set. So uh, the experts, uh, some of the guys a bit like myself that have done this before, you're tapping into their expertise, but you're also kind of a little bit of, well, I I don't need to get involved. I can rely on them to do it. And that's fine. So there is a pro to doing that. But here's where I think the con sits into this. uh, And I I don't mean that as a a literal. the first and most obvious thing is if you go into a joint venture with somebody, inevitably your stake is watered down. There's a reduced value. So there's a reduced value in the revenue that you can get from that company because you don't own 100% of it. Secondly, and really importantly, there's a massively reduced value on exit. So the whole idea that we teach is, in very simple terms, acquire a business on a multiple of three and sell it on a multiple of six. Now, if you only own 50% of that, or less, then obviously that percentage, your share, your piece of the pie is significantly reduced. But the other one that I'm really concerned about uh, and would bother me massively is what are the conditions for exit? So if I joint venture with you, we have to have something called a shareholders agreement. If we don't have a shareholders agreement, there's nothing in writing to say, well, how do we solve problems when problems crop up and guarantee problems will crop up? I might be talking to you and saying, do you know what, I need to liquidate my assets, I need to sell, I might be getting divorced, I might suddenly become ill, I might wake up one morning and think, I don't want to do this anymore. How do you get out of a joint venture agreement or arrangement if you don't have a shareholders agreement? To get a shareholders agreement, you're going to have to get a legally binding document. To get a legally binding document, you're going to need a lawyer somewhere down the line. Lawyers cost money. So you're starting to add in layers of complexity that I just don't think are... Uh, ideal for beginners in this game. So what we do, my philosophy is, I want you to have 100% of the deals that you find. I teach you how to do that. I encourage you to go down that road. Now occasionally, I will do a joint venture, but generally it'll be something like 75-25 with with a more reasonable split of the workload and who's going to do what in the deal. And crucially, there is a shareholders agreement in place. So I would really caution you to think long and hard before you get involved in what seems like a nice simple solution of a 50-50 JV. Um, Trust me, I've been there, I've been in 50-50 JVs and they've always ended in tears. So be very careful. Um, There are some smart people out there, but for you as a newbie, it 
feels to me like you're potentially sticking your head in the jaws of the lion. And the lion might be smiling right now, but you know, a few months or a couple of years down the line, you may find yourself regretting the decision to go into a joint venture in that, on that basis. But hey, uh, that's just my opinion. So if you'd like to know more, you want to ask me some more about that, is it a good idea or a bad idea, what can happen, what can go well, what can go badly, just get in touch. Give us a call, send us an email, send a message via Facebook, whatever works for you. But do get in touch, I encourage you to do that. All the details will be at the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you found that helpful. And until next time, bye for now.